Hey everybody, welcome back to the Nidus Anarchy series. I am your host, Adam, the CIO of Nidus. And today we're going to talk about Elon Musk getting ripped by the Pentagon for not supporting an attack on Crimea. So what's going on here? So this was news to me. Yesterday, the AP put out a article stating that Elon Musk's refusal to have Starlink support Ukraine attack in Crimea raises questions for Pentagon. Obviously pretty open-ended. Um, the gist of it is this though. So Ukraine apparently wanted to use some drones to do a surprise attack on Crimea and they wanted to use Starlink's internet to perform all the necessary things they need to do to do this. Anyway, uh, Starlink said no. So, or SpaceX, you know, the owner of Starlink, and now they're going after Musk for this directly. What's interesting is Musk was doing something, you know, kind of almost like out of the kindness of his heart, right? Because he's donated all these terminals for Starlink to all these to, to everyone over Ukraine, so they had internet during all the, what was going on. But this was not a military contract. He was over there just trying to help and almost like provide aid for people to get them internet in places that they couldn't get it. He never meant for this to be a military tactic. It actually even says in the article, Musk was not on a military contract when he refused the Crimea request. And what's interesting about this is, if, this is kind of like the government kind of pushing you know, the tech sector into saying, hey, do what we want. I mean, you, there was just another one just the other day where uh, the FBI raided some guy and uh, we won't get into the whole details of that one, but they contacted Liberty Safe and said, hey, we need you to give us, you know, the backdoor code so we can open this guy's safe and get in there. And Liberty Safe said, yeah, sure, no problem. And just gave it to him. No subpoena, no nothing. They just asked and they said, sure, no problem. So this is normal, right? The government's going to hit up tech companies. They've hit up Apple all the time for backdoors to say, hey, we need you to open this phone for us. They've refused. Um, but it's a very common request for the government to go to tech industry and say, hey, we need you to do something for us, even though it may cross your moral or, you know, maybe even your more than just a moral boundary in some cases. And what's even more interesting about this Elon Musk thing is SpaceX was funding all of this Starlink internet for everyone for free. Like they weren't charging anyone. The U.S. government was paying some of it, um, but again, not in a military aspect. And then um, apparently Elon posted some tweet that's, you know, had everyone vote, like, how do you think the war should end or something on those lines? And this is pretty interesting. This was on The Guardian. Um, Andrzej Melnik, uh, Ukraine's ambassador to Germany, uh, his response was, quote, F off is my very diplomatic reply to you. And what's interesting is right after that quote, <laughs> uh, Musk threatened to stop providing Starlink to Ukraine altogether. And this is what's interesting is it's, you know, it's, you get someone providing aid and help to someone via technology, and then they expect more and they want to use it for their needs in a military aspect. And they have no, they don't want to be involved. It's like, no, look, I'm here to help the people, but we want you to do this militarily. No. Then they come after you and they're like, well, fine, then I'm not going to help you. And then now the, the Pentagon's involved. This is crazy. And I, what's interesting is it's really stems to the whole, how much, is the government tied into the IT sector? And obviously it's tied in massively. First it was the phones, right? So they had all the ties into like AT&T, MCI back in the day. Like they're, you know, they're tapped into those phones hard because that's how communication was. Everything's over the phone lines, data lines. Now it's the internet. You know, we have the whole thing from, again, we were talking about before when we were talking about carnivore. That was an old school protocol back then. Then they had the whole um, Echelon project after that. And it's just migrated up into whole new stuff now. But the government overstepping their boundaries and just trying to read and just, you know, take over tech as much as they can to get it to their advantage is nothing new. And you really shouldn't expect them not to try, right? Like, why wouldn't they? It's their job to do whatever they're doing to the best extent that they can. And if they can just ask some tech company to give them stuff to do it, why wouldn't they give it to them? Well, this is when it comes into the world of VPNs, right? So I'm sure you know what a VPN is. So your VPN, it secures your traffic from your computer, or your device, a tablet or phone. You can have them on there as well. So it, commu it wraps all of your communication over SSL, which encrypts it. So instead of just having talks between, like, let's say, um, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to contact Twitter let's say I'm gonna, or X.com. So I'm going to go into X.com and I'm going to post something. Well, all that communication, when, I'm, when I post it, I'm not actually sending a message directly to X's servers to make this post. There's a whole bunch of computers in between that are relaying that message all the way down. And then eventually it gets to X and then they post it. 
Well, what happens is you have lots of malicious, sometimes not malicious, sometimes government, whatever, sitting in the middle, reading all those messages that are going through. Now, if you're using SSL, they should be encrypted. SSL has been had proven vulnerabilities in the, in the past. Just look at the Heartbleed, Heartbleed exploit. I was actually brought in to help um, healthcare.gov when Heartbleed came out to fix a huge problem that happened during then. So that was actually pretty cool to actually do that. We, we rolled that out. But yeah, so SSL does have vulnerabilities from time to time. And what zero days exist that governments know that we don't, who knows, right? So basically, if you're sending a message from your tablet and you're going to post the message onto X, you need to assume that every computer between this tablet and X that's touching that message is able to read it, even if you think it's secure. So to get around that, you can use a VPN. So now what you're saying is this tablet is going to contact for everything that it does. It's going to send it to this server first. And then that server is then going to route the messages securely all the way to the actual and, and systems. So now it eliminates anyone from reading what's actually happening between those servers. So basically you're just encrypting all of your traffic as much as you possibly can. Now, this is something you're going to want to do a little bit of research on your own. Maybe I'll talk to you a little bit later. But now we're going to talk into the the eyes. So you have the 14 eyes, the nine eyes, and I think it's like the, the four or five eyes. And what that means is it's the group of countries that have kind of come together in agreement to share data amongst each other. So the 14 eyes are the 14 countries that have agreed to basically share information. So you're like, oh, hey, I'm going to use a uh, special service in Switzerland because it's safe there. Well, they're part of the 14 eyes and they share with the US government. So if you did something over there, they're gonna take, take their logs and send it to the US whenever they ask for it because they share data freely back and forth. Um, if you're using a VPN provider, you wanna make sure that the VPN you're going through is outside of the 14 eyes. You wanna make sure they have zero log retention because you don't want any metadata to be to be stored or gathered to get information on what you're doing either. So that's why when you look into this 14 eyes, nine eyes things, it's important to know that where your VPN is going to, that it's outside of that. So even if you're using a VPN, like let's say you're using Nord VPN, very common, popular, or any big one that's out there, Cisco and all that kind of stuff. Well, they're US based. You're like, oh, well, it's a US based company. Well, that means legally, if the US government comes in and says, hey, we have a subpoena, you need to give us all this information and you need to do everything we do. And you can't tell them about it because we're also going to slap a gag order on you. Well, they have to do it. And you'll never even know that all of your information is being tapped. If you do it through a VPN outside the 14 eyes, you're a lot safer. I'm not saying how to get around stuff. I'm just saying if you're paranoid and you want to get around things, make sure you're using a VPN. That's the only way to really be safe. So there's all kinds of VPNs. I personally use ExpressVPN, even though I know now it's probably compromised. Um, a few years ago, ExpressVPN was actually bought by a company that was a known like spam clickbait company. Um, I forget what they are. I don't remember the details, but basically once they got bought out by that company, it was basically a huge red flag that says, don't trust ExpressVPN anymore, which is kind of a bummer because I've always loved it. Another one that I've used a lot is Zorro VPN. I'm not paid by either one of these. Like I said, ExpressVPN, I don't even necessarily trust it, but I do use it because it's easy and it's, I'm not doing anything nefarious, so I'm not really worried about it. And it's easy to use. It. It's across my whole family uses. So it's on all my kids' phones. Like even my daughter, my kids know to have their VPN on, on their phone or their tablet whenever they're doing anything. So I start them small. So that's about it. I don't really have much else to say. I'm not gonna ramble on anymore. Um, if you use a VPN and you know of a better one than this, let me know. Um, I'm always looking for a new VPN. I, obviously I want it to be fast outside the, outside the 14 eyes and zero log retention. If they accept Tor, even better. Uh, so hit me up, post it in the comments on YouTube or LinkedIn. Love to check it out. Hit me up on TikTok, X, Twitter, um, Instagram at Nidus IAM, that's N Y E D I S I A M, or Adam at Nidus.com, and I'll try to answer all your questions. I'll see you guys around. Later.